on Stepping off a lot of tributes for him Because we miss him so much And it breaks my deal. My heart to have to do this today But we are going to do it Welcome everybody to this special episode Of Collider Heroes I am John Rocco The producer of the show As many of you know And I'm sure all of you know our king of the sweaties, our beloved leader, John Schnepp, passed away last week. All of us, a lot of us were there at Comic-Con, commiserating with each other, telling stories, raising glasses, having incredible memories uh, and experiences told to us that we didn't know about, about John Schnepp. And everywhere I walked on the floor, people stopped me to offer their condolences, to talk about their experiences. And when I posted stuff on social media about his passing and the details, people offered some incredible uh, thoughts and remembrances of John. And I will start off with one as I brought up on Movie Talk. It's the one that affects me the most, is his father wrote a very long remembrance of John and said, my son wasn't into sports, he wasn't into these kinds of things, and he felt like he had no one he could look up to. And then I showed him an episode of Heroes, and he saw himself in Schnepp. He saw that he could be this kind of interesting looking dude and be successful doing the things that he's doing and be sweaty and passionate about the things that he is and then make fun of things in the way and do the things that he does and all these things. And he saw something in him that he related to as a young child. And he said, finally, he had someone to look up to. And that is the magic of Schnepp, one of the most incredibly unique people ever that I've ever met in my life, and I think all of us have ever experienced in our world. And it was my honor to take over the producing duties uh, last, last year and work with John, and John was incredibly gracious uh, to welcome me with open arms and to work with me. And uh, it just was a life-changing experience for me. And I grew in confidence, and as you saw by our banter, it was a lot of fun, back and forth in that way. And uh, the frustration was always, uh, playful, and uh, the conversations we had about politics, comic books, and superheroes were so moving for me and life-changing for me, oh, and opened my eyes on some incredible new ways to look at these uh, superheroes and these superhero movies and these comic books. Now, as many of you know, we had numerous guests that rolled through Heroes, and a lot. some of them are here uh, to offer their tributes, their remembrances, and their experiences, and the first of which, uh, coming from Scotland, the wee Claire Lim is here to be my co-host for today's episode, someone who knew John very well, uh, and Holly as well. Please, we cannot uh, do any tribute without mentioning the incredible strength and power and the rock that Holly Payne was through this whole thing, and uh, just, just incredible strength she showed through this process, and you were there for them. You got to know them at a premiere. We heard that on Movie Talk earlier today. Um, yes. And we, what are some of your thoughts about Schnepp now as we... I've been thinking about the the first moment that I met Schnepp, and I met him just before I'd met Holly. Mm. And um, it was a Comic-Con, is, is a natural playground. And um, yeah. I had watched The Death of Superman Live what, Lives What Happened, and it was a great, a great documentary that everyone needs to watch if you've not seen it. And yeah. I walked up to their booth, which is, was in a tiny corner of this massive, <laughs> busy hall, and uh, just Schnepp was just standing there, just staring around, <laughs> just on his own, just a giant of a man. I was like, oh, didn't realize he's that tall. <laughs> he was so massive. And I'm, I felt like a tiny goblin next to him. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. And um, he was really chilled, really calm. And as soon as the camera went on, he was like, yeah. And his enthusiasm and his, his life force were just projecting through. He, like, he just was so knowledgeable and so... Um, enthusiastic about what he loved. And that was my first impression of Schnepp. Um, and then I met Holly um, and we all became fast friends as couples, me, my husband and, and John Holly. And we, we share the same entrepreneurial spirit, the same adventuring spirit. And they have taken us, we've all gone on so many adventures together as a foursome. Um, we feel like our own little fantastic four, like adventuring around London, <laughs> adventuring around LA, showing us all these little secret pockets and trying to get John to do a Scottish accent was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys could have heard, heard that. We tried to take him through all the European accents. That was one thing he couldn't do. Right. So yeah, that, that was, uh, he was good at everything 
apart from accents, but <laughs> I, you know, hearing all of um, the stories and all of these little, I'm going to call them shades of schnep, mm. um, heartens me. Uh, it just warms my heart. Um, and he will absolutely never be forgotten. It feels like I'm having an out-of-body experience even being here. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, I'm just glad that I can be to say some words. So. Well, we appreciate you being here, Claire. Thanks so much. Thank uh, and I do want to introduce uh, the first two panelists here coming in, Koi Jandrew and Markia McCarty. Uh, both of you having been on the show recently a lot, talking about comic book superheroes, being at Las Vegas Comic Con, drunken videos, playing very <laughs> funny stuff. I mean, just incredible. We can't talk about we can't talk about, talk about John Schnapp without. We all have remembrances, but we knew John was a fun, crazy guy. So you guys have so uh, many memories with him that have just happened over these last few months. Like, what what would you like to talk about? What would you like to say? Really, that much? Okay, interesting. <laughs> I. Uh, yeah. I feel like um, I, I've known John for years and I didn't get to work with him until recently. Mm -hmm. And he was a guy uh, that never missed a birthday, man. That guy, like, <laughs> I, I went through and I, I, was, I was dumb enough to click on the see friendship button on Facebook to just dive in. Um, and it was without fail between like nine and noon just birthday and just <laughs> and he realized that i am a shameless narcissist so as the birthdays advanced it was happy birthday week happy birthday month he like understood that it was more about like the and he just he was always like there for for that perspective like he knew what made your day special and he always like found the way to get to it and he was like that with movies and comics but also about people like mm. I feel like John showed me how okay it was to be authentic. Like I am a weird enough guy that I've been worried about it. <laughs> so John was was one of the people that before I knew him well, I was like, oh, that that's an opportunity to to lean a little. Okay, this is fine. A little bit. Okay, this is fine. <laughs> and John just went all the way, and he was he was so inspiring before I knew him, and is so inspiring now that I know him. And doing the show with him was was one of my great privileges of life because. It was, it was talking about the stuff that we both love, but like um, with all of the, the zeal that I like keep in a box because Sean just fucking goes. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so like it felt so good to just have a kindred spirit that was as big and as lively and then he was actually as big and as lively <laughs> so so john was important in my life before i knew him and then once i knew him he got better and they always talk about like how hard it is to get to know people in la but john was just an open book once you knew him like just the like the, the right on coy like the fucking right on mm -hmm. and um that trip to vegas was perfect we got to drive up together we got to like that car ride was just four hours of John. Yeah. The soda. Uh, <laughs> the soda. We got the grossest soda yeah, I got. We, we stopped at a gas station on the way and you know, we're just exploring you know, the gas station. It's like all the different kinds of jerky kind of things. Of course, and, of and course. Everything like that. And um, there were there was these row of um, gourmet sodas. <laughs> Everything from um, cat piss was one. I don't know what was actually in there, but um, thank God John actually gravitated to the ones that seemed like they, they you could actually drink them. Um, kind of like uh, Koi ended up getting a buffalo wing one. Um, uh, I got a, I think it was maple syrup. Um, and uh, oh God, what John was got John's? peanut butter and jelly. Peanut and drank, butter and jelly. He drank soda. one and a half sips and then offered to give it away at the booth. <laughs> he was going to give it to a fan. <laughs> but is, those little yeah. moments that normally wouldn't be exciting, like we were just wandering a convenience store in Nevada, that yeah. shouldn't be a good time. And it was like a very documented experience. Yeah, yeah. And we found giant Tootsie Rolls. And like it was just, it was when you're a kid, being with John Schnepp was like being in big. Yeah. Like everything was like the, the adulthood of like figuring out Tom Hanks, but the kid of being kid Tom Hanks. Everything was like the entire Comic Con Shazam was, was John would have loved that trailer. And, and Aquaman, I want to talk to them about that. Yeah. Spider Ham. Like Spider -Ham. the fact that there's a Spider Ham and yeah. a Nicolas Cage voice Spider Man in one movie, that is John. John did that. Yeah. That would have been the first 15 minutes of this show. This it's whole thing. Like, oh my God. <laughs> just all about Spider Ham and this Nicolas happened? Cage. Yes. Yeah. And he taught my girlfriend how to gamble. Like we wandered yeah. through a casino, and he, <laughs> he lost so he much lost money. So much money, so quick. He was, he was like, <laughs> he was like, let me show you how to do roulette. And then he he <laughs> lost two hundred dollars in twenty <laughs> minutes. 
<laughs> we were standing at the. That we were, sounds about he, right. He lost the money before the drinks could go <laughs> yeah, back. We, we were at the craft table and I was like, "That's like twenty bucks, right?" He's like, "No, nah, it's a hundred. Five minutes ago, I was like, well, "I'm out. We should go." And I'm like, "You just taught Sheena how to gamble that way. Like this is." But it never like he wasn't vexed. He wasn't. He, he no. never let the world weigh him down. And he was just always, even when he didn't like something, he found a way to be positive. And that's that's what I have always tried to do. So to meet someone that did it and was authentic in it, and also created so much that created my child, like Space Ghost, and and the 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 amount of work he did outside of of this, yeah. and the amount of talent he had that was so multifaceted, the amount of creativity. Like it's just it's so inspirational to to yeah. know someone that good and that talented. Usually it's one or the other. They call him King of the Sweaties <laughs> for a reason, and you know it's because he was he set an example of how to be sweaty about something you loved at the highest level. The nine with no shame, man. Like, right? Yeah. With no shame and pure joy. Marky, what are you some of your remembrances of being on the show with John, coming yeah. onto the show for the first time, and then the multiple episodes you've been on with him? Uh, the thing I I really loved about John, um, amongst a lot of things. Uh, for one, so easy to love. Dear God, <laughs> that man. Um, and then uh, didn't even know the term gatekeeping when it comes to anything. It's right. like whatever your nerdery was, it was more than enough. And if it wasn't something that he was interested in, like hey, I think I tried to have a Sailor Moon conversation or mm. something with him before. Maybe it wasn't Sailor Moon, but whatever it was, he was just like, uh, <laughs> he, was, he would like nod and, and you could feel he was listening mm -hmm. and he would sort, but it was also like, uh, that that's that's bull. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> I think. Um, but one of the things I, I particularly loved about this is like uh, I don't know if people realize or not, but the After Heroes show was even <laughs> yeah. more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like uh, after. Oh, we know that After Heroes show oh, very man. well here at Collider. Yes. Go to the back. <laughs> go to the go around outside. The around the, back. Back. the wall. This is around an office. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Three hours later, we're all sitting yeah. back in the back. Please. Like, yeah. like Amy's just like, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it just builds and builds. It's one of the things, because it's like it wasn't enough to have like the hour, the hour 15 mm. until Roca could finally um, kick John out yeah, yeah. of the studio. It's like we'd stand there in the office and then they'd have to uh, make us go to the far end. And then even then we were too loud. You guys so. want to go get lunch? Yeah, let's go get lunch. Let's hey, the movie theater's right here at five o'clock. Yeah, um, I, I in particular love just how how open and accessible he was. I, 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 I guess I didn't realize how much Schnepp was already in my life with mm. all of the stuff that he did, you know, Space Ghost, um, uh, directing Black Panther, yeah. the 2010 um, BET uh, Black Panther with yeah. Reginald Hudlin. Uh, and then once I actually met the man, it was like, oh, he, he was a person that you didn't realize that you always needed him to be in your life and now that he was there you couldn't picture your life without him right. um and i don't i didn't get to know him as long as everybody else and i just wish i had had more time uh he yeah. was one of those people that i would love to uh been able to do that seat friendship <laughs> on facebook with yeah you know, it's a weird journey a, man <laughs> yeah yeah i imagine so just thinking over uh some of the conversations i had with him with like um yeah avengers infinity war uh when we all saw that at the same time at the uh in that morning um mm -hmm. showing uh, and then we did like a three-way video it was me him and and robert and then afterwards, um, uh, Schnepp was like, oh, hey, can I ride with you back to the studio? I was like, yeah. oh, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes we, we could do that. John <laughs> Schnepp, let's do that right now. Get in my crappy car. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, and then we just had this intense conversation of all the things that we wouldn't be able to speak about because we were driving to Collider um, to do a non-spoiler <laughs> yeah. review of Avengers Infinity War. And it's just... Oh, and speaking about Vegas, like on the way to Vegas, you know, that's like, what, a four hour, four and a half hour. Mm. John talked the entire time. Oh, yeah. No surprise. The entire <laughs> no surprise. I learned time. so much about his childhood. And I got to, I got to hear about like John Schnepp's a hip hop head, man, like me. Oh, yeah. So I got to hear about Big him going time. to like OG, like street hip hop mm. shows and like growing up in Chicago and experiencing the hip hop scene in Chicago mm -hmm. that I've only heard of in like cassette tapes. And like John was there and he must have been just like just the best view. Mm -hmm. And like I can't have like and we also on, on the way to Vegas like we heard about like what got him into comics and like yeah. why his perspective, his perspective of what it was and he also he cares so much about people people that he works with that if he felt like he wasn't doing something right by someone then that would like kind of agonize mm -hmm. you know with him and he would have to keep on turning that over mm -hmm. you know it's like because to talk, an amazing person a good man a great man 
Um, most definitely. And uh, just all the nerdery. Yeah. Uh, uh, he told us about um, how he and Holly first met. And I thought, like, oh, my that God, they're going to be together yeah. forever. We, this is amazing. We yeah. drove in. Yeah. We got those demon sodas. And then we went immediately to an all-you-can-eat buffet. So by the time we got to the panel, we were barely human. Yeah. <laughs> but while we were at the all-you-can-eat buffet, it was just hearing about him and Holly yeah. and how they met and, like, the dates the and, the, and the adventures. The love. And, and it was just, it was really good to see and talk with a man about not just pop culture, like yeah. to get to know him. And I have one, I have one brief story about. Yeah, and uh, then I have one. Okay. One so, so John, uh, okay, quickly, it's a half story, one and a half story. I need my whiteboard. Is what so, I, <laughs> so I found out on the way there that John worked at Showcase Cinemas. I also worked at Showcase Cinemas. Oh, and we yeah. both worked at Showcase Cinemas in the same years. And we both were like super conspiratorial, like, hey, do you know that trick? Do you know that trick? <laughs> and there were things you could do to either profit Right. At the movie theater when you're making minimum well, wage. Just, and we both had like these, <laughs> like we had these competing stories of how we screwed over this mega corporation. Look at you, Showcase Cinemas. Uh, but it was this amazing thing where we both had no idea we were both getting paid by the same corporation yeah. in different states, doing the same malicious, like evil doings. And it was like, like I would sneak people in, like Lord of the Rings, like someone in the back paid me 20 bucks, they'd be front of the line. Like John had the same like entrepreneurial right. spirit at the job. Like, you got a problem. I can't nerds. believe he's still, just still saying this right now. Yeah. He's just saying this. We're going it's Tribute. This is a wake. <laughs> this, this is here we go. Yeah, yeah, this this is bring out the no. beers. <laughs> soda cups. But the, the story I wanted to tell was oh, John. That, oh, that wasn't that a story. Was story. Sorry. Sorry, Internet. Uh, I went to a Stanley event, and I didn't know John was going to be there. Yeah. And I walked in, and it was a company sent me there, and they didn't care about me there. They were like, go do a story. So I had seats that were literally non-existent. The seats went up to T. My seat said V, and I didn't know where I was supposed to go. And I was like, how is this even possible? I see John. And John pulls me aside and he's like, no, no, you're good. You're with me. And brings me into the green room. Wow. And the whole time we're at the Stan Lee event, I was supposed to be like, uh, and yeah. I'm like, between John and Lou Ferrigno, which I tell you is a giant, <laughs> that's a lot of people. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, this is completely, I'm having a different experience because of John Schnapp. Yeah. And we knew each other for years, but that was the first time he reached out as a friend. And he showed me what it meant to, to, to like no gate, like no gatekeeping. It was the most inclusive I've ever felt, and it was with all my heroes. It was with all the people that are in the comic community, and it was it was I got to meet Stan Lee thanks to John. I got to experience the the peak of comicdom because of John Schnapp, and I think that's what he did for the world. And I got to do it in a tangible 3D way, and that was when I realized like, oh, you're not just an acquaintance, you're a good friend. And then it wasn't it wasn't long after he brought me on the show, and and we became like he was. John is one of my best friends, and I, and I can't, I, I can't fathom not being able to text him or call, or look at the see friendship or wait for my birthday thing this year. And and the last thing I'm saying is, uh, he and Sheena were talking about my birthday already. So I, in six weeks, get to have a little bit of John. I get to have like fingerprints on my birthday that were him because yeah. they had this idea. That's the best birthday gift. That's the kind of person he was, yeah, absolutely, with the birthdays and everything like that. We talked about that on Movie Talk, how he could find these little things, whether whether there was something from 1987 or whatever, <laughs> like he found something, he heard, he listened to you. That was really the gift of John, he could listen to you, you know, if he was interested. Uh, what was your story, Mark, here? Uh, it was uh, going on about the inclusivity uh, mm -hmm. when it came to John. Uh, at Amazing Comic Con, there's a little miscommunication with um, who would be moderating what kind of a thing. And I was mm -hmm. called in to moderate, um, uh, was it Jason Aaron? And um, his last name is Young. Scotty Young. Scotty Young, thank mm -hmm. you. I was going to say Cody Young. Who's that? I don't know. Um, Scotty Young. And, um, you know, so I was like, I was there. I was like, oh, okay, great. We're going to do this. And, and then uh, John comes up. He's like, oh, good. I'm here to, to moderate the panel. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, great, great. Yeah, this was uh, the panel we were talking about. And then I was like, John, is okay if I like co-moderate with you? He's like, yeah, get up here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, great. Yeah. I mean, that's and that was just that was John. And then like afterwards, him thanking me for co-moderating it with him. And then and then just. Uh, Okay, for drunken uh, Vegas, um, and I couldn't believe he said it on a collider, but it was like um, um, John ended up getting tickets to Absinthe um, with like um, you know Paul and everything, um, and uh, and and then invited me, uh, 
Cody, Koi, and um, Sheena along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, when we got there, there were these giant drinks called Green Fairies. Um, And yeah, (laughs) so me and John got the same drink, and that's just a bad idea because it's like, that might have been a John size drink, but for me, (laughs) it's like, yeah. um, So I'm I'm drinking that and and telling John, oh, this isn't working. What's, you know, this isn't anything. And then um, John said, like, on air, he'd be like, but then halfway through the show, she was like, Roo! <laughs> and like, yeah, thanks, John. So now I'm going to tell that I'm going to tell that story yeah. because why not? Why it was not? a great show. And a uh, green fairy is a monster. <laughs> it is. It, oh, no, yeah. uh, not that I know. I mean, I've, I've heard. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> <Whatever. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Couldn't feel my legs for three days. Uh, this is great uh, remembrances and experiences from both of you. Thank you so much. I know it's not easy. And uh, my heart goes out to both of you because uh, it's been fun. It was fun producing the show, having you guys. I know John Speck spoke very highly of both of you and your, what you brought to the show and your experiences and the new fresh energy and points of views that you guys brought to the stuff that we talked about here on the show. So thank you both for taking the time, honestly. Um, another person who uh, has been on the show as well a number of times and someone that John absolutely promoted with the Jupiter Jet comic recently. Jason Inman, he recorded a video, couldn't be here today. He's a writer assistant, writing or whatever, what he's doing on that show over there at CBS. Um, but he took the time to send in a video and we'll play that for you now. Hey, super friends. Sorry that I couldn't be there today, but I wanted to make sure that I still had a way to honor the great John Schnepp and the mighty Olympus that is Collider Video that he helped create. Now, what I think is the greatest thing about John Schnepp is it didn't matter how well you knew him, you felt like you were one of his best friends, which is why I think fans responded to him so much. His kindness and his excitement for everything nerd was infectious. It got inside you and it made us all excited. It made us all nerdy. It made us all sweaty. Now, one of my favorite stories is a couple of years ago, John and I were attending Phoenix Comic Con together. And he had a booth, and we had a table, and we were there pitching Jupiter Jet. And on a simple night after the con, I told him a little bit about the story, loved it, gave us some thoughts, helped us out with it because he loved to create. And we sort of hung out and we waxed poetical about what kind of world or what kind of comics, what kind of stories would be out there if Stan Lee and Jack Kirby never left the Fantastic Four? Because that was one thing that John and I could just talk on and on and on about. All, everything, Kirby. And it was all about where they would have taken this cosmic, crazy flavor with new characters and new stories and creating this enjoyable nerd world that doesn't exist, but to me and John, it was so real. We could see it, we could read it, we could enjoy it. And that to me is the perfect word to describe John. Cosmic. It's the only word I can think of to describe him. His passion, his mind, his art, his love of the weird, his love of the zany, it's all cosmic because he was cosmic to me. Um. I love that he supported everything we did. He supported our book because I think he loved everything art. He loved everything creation because he was cosmic. Um, I do know that John loved everything Jack Kirby. He loved everything of the Silver Age. And I would like to think that right now, John Schnepp is up there creating the fifth world for us because Jack Kirby created the fourth world. John is gonna create the fifth world, and he's gonna fill it with all the cosmic zaniness and all the awesome and all the love, and he's waiting for us up there with his Zeta beams and his mother boxes to welcome us all whenever we see them up there. And Jack Kirby, of course, is gonna be sitting at his special dining room table, and John Schnepp is gonna be best friends with him. I'm expecting that to be 100%. Um, I think the best way we can honor John Schnepp's legacy is to fill the world with all kinds of cosmic flavor and Let's honor John by keeping our fandom, our joy, our love for all this nerdy flavor cosmic. Just pure cosmic in honor of John. Shweddy forever, John. 
Devil horns, absolutely. That's awesome. The words from Jason Inman. I want to thank him for taking the time to send that video in. I'm sure a lot of you uh, echo the sentiments Jason was talking about. And his shirt, Don't Hate, Create. I mean, that's the thing with John. The mind was constantly going, all kinds of projects, ideas, things that he was coming up with. Uh, it was incredible. And Claire, you had, I'm sure you heard so many of those projects and stories and ideas just randomly throughout your experiences with John. Yes. Is something you can, you can talk about? Yeah, um, I can talk about some of those things. I mean, Holly would get in touch with me because uh, you know, girls are sometimes more communicative of, on text and what's that? So, you know, not true. Just, just I saying, think it's true. Just I, saying. I echo it. <laughs> so we were like WhatsApp voice message each other and shoot, and occasionally John would be in the back going, "Oh hey Claire," like in the background, <laughs> which was quite comforting. It was really lovely to hear. But she would tell me about all these projects, and when they were over at Christmas time with us just there, um, I saw some of his artwork mm. first of all, which I had never seen before, which was absolutely incredible um, and the series that uh, John and Holly were working on um, which is going to get out there god damn it if this mm -hmm. the last thing anyone does you know I know Holly is going to fight tooth and nail to get it done and um, was privy to, to that process like mm -hmm. hearing about the process all the way through the way that Holly and John's minds melded together creatively was incredible um you know john's got all these crazy ideas then we can do this and then we can do that and and what about this and that and holly would hone it <laughs> in and then make things happen just the, a team like that is incredible and his mm. book of poetry i know that holly wants to get as many net projects out there as possible yeah. um to just keep his memory alive like and there's so many other things you need to check out. The first time John came uh, and Holly came around to the house is maybe like two or three years ago. Right. And we sat up till the wee hours of the morning, till like four or five a.m. in the morning. <laughs> My cat was like not happy about it. So I was like, I want to sleep. We were just listening to like 90s grunge. And, and you know, John was showing his Metalocalypse and um, the, the video that he was in with Ozzy Osbourne as a young yeah, guy. And yeah. I was like, wow, you, you really do look like a convincing mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> like, even now when I see his face, I'm like, yeah, like, that could have been another career choice for you. Um, but you know, all of those mad moments, like, what Holly talked about, he has done so much. And even though he's not here, th it's going to continue, yeah. which is something we should all be so feel so lucky for. Yeah, yeah. And 100%. Holly, just an incredible driving force in John's life. And so to hear her talking about it on Movie Talk and the projects mm -hmm. and the way she's going to keep his memory alive and the, his ideas and his project, that's all of it just makes all of us feel excited because he had so much still to give, you yeah. know, and so knowing that it, at least some of it will still find its way and find its audience is, is really powerful. 100%. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to welcome on the next two guests here, Emma Fife, the lovely Emma Fife and my man Jay Washington. <laughs> uh, both of you have been on Heroes multiple times. You've yes. had experiences with John. Oh, yes. I was doing so. Heroes back when we were doing it every single day. And yeah. Oh, trying yes. to do 25-minute episodes. Uh, and I, just I remember that experiment. So yeah. many memories of Roka standing off to the side with his whiteboard, just like furiously waving it in the air, and Schnepp literally just like looking at you being like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was just this him. face, this face. Yeah, that yeah, was exactly back, yeah. it. Exactly it. It. It, was, it was like yeah. the mouth that made like the upside. It was like yeah. a frown, but a smile still. And it's just like, yeah, I got you, dude. And then he would not skip over topics. He would be like, just uh, cut, yeah. cut ahead to this thing. Yeah. And he would just keep going. <laughs> I remember like during the 200th episode of Heroes, uh, it was this big mega episode. And we had so many people we who really had been did. on the show throughout the years on. We and, used two uh, stages. It was two stages. Yeah, it, was, it was two it was stages insane. of 10 people. And uh, <laughs> I remember, first of all, I was so honored to be like at the table with Schnepp mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I remember it was like we had I think that um, maybe the Infinity War trailer had just dropped that day though right. I had actually seen it at Comic-Con that year and done the Infinity War trailer reaction with Schnepp for yeah. Collider which was uh, amazing uh, and but we like had not even gotten to talking about the Infinity <laughs> War trailer and we were supposed to be done in like five minutes and it was just <laughs> classic Schnepp. Yep, classic Schnepp. <laughs> Absolutely classic Schnepp. That's a great way to put it. Jay, what are some of your memories of working with John and getting to know John? Everybody who knows me knows I'm big about where I'm from. Mm. Born and raised south side of Chicago. And him and I bonded over that. When he found he was like, oh, wait, 
did you move to Chicago? I'm like, no, I'm from Chicago. He was like, dude, <laughs> I spent so much of the 90s in there. And then, so we sat down. He was like, then we started talking about different places and venues and stuff. He's like, is this still? I'm like, no, they took it down. Turned it. He was like, what the fuck? We talked about my neighborhoods are changing. And then, like, even Koi said, talking to him about hip hop yeah. like, was the most unsuspected thing you would ever like wait I'm talking to you about what yeah and like we were going in depth we were talking about tribe we were talking about guru we were talking about gangstar and I'm like we, we really having this conversation about 90s hip hop <laughs> and like Markeem has said I grew up with this man I was a I was one of those people who stayed up till three in the morning in Chicago mm -hmm. watching the Black Panther cartoon when it came on BT mm -hmm. because for some god on no reason they put it on at three in the morning. <laughs> Don't know why. I used to have terrible uh, insomnia <laughs> when I was a kid, and so I would wa I had a TV in my room and we had Cartoon Network, and they would always show Space Ghost Coast to Coast like yeah. super yeah. late at night. So yeah, that Space Ghost Coast to Coast uh, Aqua Teen Hum for yeah. us. I'm like I uh, knew of them, and then I saw the death of Superman Lives. What happened? I was like, okay, this is yeah. a dope ass documentary. Why does Nicolas Cage have the suit on? <laughs> how did they, whoever, how did whoever do this find all this out? So I have a really funny story about that actually. So I am in the Death of Superman Lives documentary. Uh -huh. This was before I knew John and Holly. Oh, wow. I was at WonderCon years ago, and um, some people from their team were grabbing people off the floor to do reactions to seeing Nicolas Cage in the Superman <laughs> suit for the first time. Right. And it was so funny because um, Schnapp and I had been working together for probably probably about six months or so before I actually met Holly. And Holly took one look at me and went, you're in our movie. And yeah. Shep was like, what? <laughs> and, uh, and Holly was like, I edited that part myself. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, I, I've just, I've been good friends with both of them ever since. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just, you know, talking to him and then, when you realize I've been knowing you without knowing yes, you. Yes. Exactly. And then we first met through, I think it was one of the big collider events he was here, and we just started talking about comic books. He was like, dude, you really need to come on Heroes. I was like, for yeah. real? <laughs> you, you want me here? And then we would always just talk, and like we would always have conversations, again, on this table, going back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth. And then it was always, if you told him something he didn't think about, and it caught his attention, you knew it. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. Never thought about that. Yeah. And, or you, you'll have those debates about things and always sitting here, had going and watching him going to those DC rants and you like, well, let me go and get up out of here because I know, I know what this internet is going to be like in the next 20 minutes after the video. Yeah, yeah wasn't it a joy? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, my face it's, melting as it goes. It's hilarious because you watch the passion. It's beautiful and hilarious because you watch the passion and you yeah. know he don't give a shit yeah, about what so people true. about to say. Mm -hmm. He finna say exactly how you feel and he encourages you to say, you to say how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't go too far, but yeah. just, you know, say right. what you feel. And I think that that, that was the, that was really one of the things that was so special about John Schnepp was, I remember, so when I first was on Collider Heroes, I think it was like an emergency last minute thing. Wendy called me the night before and was mm -hmm. like, hey, we need one more for Heroes tomorrow, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Um, and uh, and you know, Roka's like emailing me the rundown for the mm -hmm. show and it keeps changing like, yeah. until the moment that we're literally going on camera and- um, It's very rare that that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And, uh, and I remember I had always been a little bit intimidated uh, by the idea of being on Heroes because I felt like I didn't know as much about comic books as a lot of the other people that were on the show. And it, and I wasn't worried about doing the show with, the show with Schnepp because mm. he was always so encouraging. And, and I think that, I can't remember if it was Marquis or Coy said that like the term gatekeeping was not even in his mm. vocabulary. But because he was so inclusive and enthusiastic about me being there and, and would ask me about the stuff that I liked. Yeah. Um, I had such a positive reaction from the Heroes community and the, there were so many people that were commenting saying like, oh, you were so great on Heroes. Like, we hope that we see you on there again soon. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that was just the thing that was so special about Schnepp and, and the number of people this weekend at Comic-Con, be it in person oh, or yeah. online, who came up to me and said, they were, or tweeted at me and said, I'm so sorry about the loss of your friend mm -hmm. and acknowledging that he, he was a person and, and that's what he was to me first. Um, I, uh, I remember at Comic-Con last year, I, Sinead was telling a story on Movie Talk earlier about walking around with Schnapp and all these people would come up to him 
and say hello, and he would always yell at them to say hello to me also. Um, and he, yep. and cause he, and I remember, you know, him when people were going away and him kind of taking me aside and being like, listen, there's gonna be all these people. They know who you are. They want to say hi, but you're a pretty girl. So they're intimidated, but I'm just like a regular dude like them. So they all feel like they can come talk to me, but I, it, I'm gonna make sure that everybody says hello to you and acknowledges like your talent and your hard work. And, um, and I also, my cat was really sick last year during Comic-Con. I, uh, I was super delayed getting down. I was supposed to go down Wednesday afternoon. Didn't end up making it down there till really pretty late in the evening on Wednesday night. And I just, you know, my cat was in the hospital the whole time I was there and I was really uh, freaking out. And, you know, everybody had been very uh, nice and supportive about it. But I remember one morning we were about to go into Hall H and Joey and Schnapp were running around filming some stuff outside with cosplayers mm -hmm. and just uh, other comic artists and writers, whoever they could grab. And uh, and Schnapp saw me and they had the camera and he and he like waved because he wanted to have me on. And at the time, uh, and then I started getting a phone call from the vet and I like went and I talked to the vet and, uh, and got kind of separated from them, reconnected with them later. And I was telling Schnapp, I was like, I'm really sorry, you know, this is maybe really dumb, but you know, my, my cat is really sick. And he was like, oh no, because I, I, I don't know if you guys know, but Holly and Schnepp mm -hmm. have two uh, lovely cats, Tiger mm -hmm. and Audrey. And they just took in some more. And yes, yes. and, ha and yes. Holly has, has a bunch of cats at their house right now, <laughs> yes. four, four more little kittens. Yes. But, but Schnepp was so, so kind to me mm -hmm. about the whole situation with my cat, <laughs> which I know is like so ridiculous, but he's like, oh, like our cat Tiger was so sick. And, and, um, and, and again, it was just, he was such a, such a, a wonderful person yeah. um, and just so, so kind. And I remember also during Comic-Con last year, like through all the stress of everything and there was some confusion at the uh, at this party that I was supposed to be on the list for and I showed up and, and nobody had my name on the list and I was already so exhausted and some other shit had happened earlier that day and uh, I ended up just leaving and I ran into Schnepp at the Bayfront bar and Schnepp was like, oh, I was at that party. It was awful. I couldn't even get a wristband to get free drinks. I went for 20 minutes. I yelled at some people and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there like, you go. And that's yeah. the two sides of Schnepp. Yes. Like he was very caring and considerate, but if you but, didn't take it, or didn't respect it, he was yes, done with yes, it. And that's, and that's, and that's yeah. another thing. You could talk to him about a, a range of topics. Yeah. Yes. We talk about comic books. We talk about life. You could talk about hip hop. You could talk about the political spectrum because you, I, and Schnepp mm -hmm. all oh, sat down yes. and had those deep conversations where it's like, wow, this is another side of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then again, you see that warm and acceptance side, because I remember talking to him about some of the things he wanted to do, because both like him and Dory and I were talking about, Dory and I were talking, he was afraid of becoming irrelevant. Yep. Yeah, yes. He was afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you're not. No. He was like, well, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. I'm like, man, I'm trying to do this. He's like, just do it, mm -hmm. just do it. Like, no matter what, because he was like, he thought he was gonna be obsolete. He was like, man, it's all these young kids, the game has changed. I'm like, dude, do you realize what you've done and created? There's no way possible. Mm -hmm. There would be no game for these young people if it wasn't right. for him. Yeah. There would be nothing. And so I, I've been trying to hold it like the whole time because a lot of people I know around me have been breaking. Yeah. And it's been hard because there are very few people who intimidate me in size and life <laughs> because of their presence all around. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a warm presence that it's like, this can't be real. Yeah. Yeah. with him but it is it was him that's how he was and to know that's not around dude the hardest thing for me right now is sitting in this seat because this is the seat i sat in when he did his last shows mm -hmm. i sat right across from him i was so mad at him I, oh my god <laughs> i was so mad at and him. he didn't give a shit you don't know no not about the time oh, about how sick he was walking pneumonia dude i he, i had it for two weeks and i couldn't Amy believe he I, came in to do the show Amy and I were like yo can you even yeah. do this yeah yeah can you even and do this? That second show. Hey, the second show, he speak. barely made it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was so mad at him. And when he left here, I said, man, just go home. Yeah. And yeah. rest. When you and guys get left better. and he was walking, I was like, you yeah. go home, you don't get out of that damn you bed. Just you just rest. rest. I will handle anything. You just go. And it's just yeah. all yeah. surreal. Yeah. But so, him to keep, you know, he's there for, he's just a, just a grafter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he doesn't want to let anyone down, you know, as well. And there's yeah. fans and stuff. So, that day, you know, the last show that we did with John, you know, he mm -hmm. was kind of ill. And then as soon as the, the cameras and the mics turn, he's like, hey, and the, yeah. the whispering, yeah. and you're like, 
oh my god he's like just that strength inside and to make everyone feel at ease even though he's suffering mm. and he was ill mm -hmm. it's just an incredible all the it's those soft memories that your mm -hmm. guys are touching upon which <laughs> i absolutely love like yeah he's like kind of you know, ethic, who cares? <laughs> but I love that, you know, he even managed to like, you know, cat whisper my cat, who's a major diva. And um, and Holly yeah. tried and, and Mac was like, mm. <laughs> But John would just sit there and there's nothing, like, I just remember seeing him with his cats, with my, like there's something really yeah. comforting about seeing this big giant, crazy looking guy <laughs> just like melting. It was just a joke that he looked like uh, Sideshow Bob <laughs> from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> and then those are the things that I, you know, the conversations you speak about, Jay, and the things like that. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know how many times that I was like, I'm going to get fired. Because I, I would have 40 minute conversations with him about, and I would try to pull away. Yeah. And be like, but, no, but no, no, but what about this? And then I'd be yeah. like, yeah, this is interesting. I'd I would love to have six hours to oh. sit here with you because <laughs> this is fascinating conversation. This one. And I can't, and it drove me insane. That's I have this one up. Was, but that's the breath of his knowledge. That's the breath. Yeah, about so, so many true. things. To, and to, your, to that extent. Things. Yeah. I have to bring this up because Coy and I brought this up this weekend. Yeah. When Lloyd Kaufman for Troma was in oh, here. Oh, Lloyd. Dear what a God. Character. What a character. Lloyd is off the rails yeah. and just as being Lloyd. But yeah. to watch John try to bring him back mm -hmm. and him just being like, <laughs> so we just yeah. got this. Yeah. You do just, know it's 2018, right, Lloyd? Well, you is can't. You can't. Yeah. Oh, no. I matter. What do you mean? Yeah. He's like, oh, oh my God. Can't. But it was so fun watching mm -hmm. him and the fun he was having yeah. in yeah. that moment. He was having fun because he, was like, having fun. he likes the rebellious he thing. He loved it. He loved it. And it was just like Koi and I over there. Dying, cause we like. I, I'm like, I can't get my phone out fast enough to record this, cause yeah. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. And so those are like things you yeah. cherish, mm -hmm. you, you bring in deep, and you you try to just live on with that. But it gets hard because it's just a memory, if that makes sense. What? But I I think if you want it to be new. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think though that you know that that uh, Holly kept saying earlier, it's like that you know Schnepp is is here he is with all of us mm -hmm. and it is because he will live on in our in our memories yeah. and and like thank goodness that if you want to go back and you want to see something that schnapp has done my god he was prolific yeah. so you you can always find a piece of of john schnapp in anything that you do and for me it's like i i will always you know remember him uh as the guy uh, lounged out on his couch in his uh, schneppy claws pajamas that Claire was talking about earlier. Just watching RoboCop while there were a bunch of half-naked girls in the other part of his house trying on clothes because Holly was having a big clothing swap. But, um, well, and, but yeah. And this is the thing you talked about, and Jay, you touched on as well. The thing that was incredible about John was that no matter how prolific he was, he still felt he was like nervous about his next project. Yeah. He was still nervous about whether it was going to be good. And he had <laughs> such a track record, right, to, to to back him up. And that was so interesting for me to see because like every little thing mean, meant so much as he was building these projects out. And then which ones would succeed, which ones would. But he always had these incredible ideas. And yet still afraid he was going to be irrelevant, still afraid, and not knowing, yeah. not knowing how much people revered and respected yeah. and adored the yes. stuff he did. And mm -hmm. the comments all of us have seen on our social media, all of mm -hmm. us have gotten in person. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Just yeah. incredible. I understood his power. I didn't understand his power. Yeah. And that was, it's been phenomenal to, and all of you out there watching, you all have get, uh, dropped some incredible remembrances and, and, and thoughts and, 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 and memories of his effect on your life. And that's been something just for me personally to be very overwhelmed by and adore him for even more, you yeah. know, and respect him uh, and, and, in his past. And he was always somebody that wanted to do better. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and he was somebody too that, and I, and I give so much credit to Holly for this mm. too, because Holly, like John, did not, de still does not deal with anybody's bullshit. Right. No. Uh, she has zero mm -hmm. bullshit tolerance. Um, and so, you know, Holly would sometimes observe things, I think, that she thought Schnepp could be doing better right. um, in terms of, uh, I mean, she talked a little bit about like owning up to the fact that this was a collaboration. Mm. And, and the thing that I, I so appreciate about Schnepp was his willingness to listen yeah. and to try and, and to acknowledge also that 
especially being like a white guy who people felt that they could really relate to mm -hmm. being so inclusive of, of people that were not of that older white male right. demographic. He always about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, He's and very aware of those things. Theory. And also being super aware that like he, he couldn't fully comprehend mm -hmm. what my experience was right. being a woman putting herself out there yeah. and sharing her opinions on the internet, but always really being willing to listen yeah. and to include me in the conversation. Yeah. And like Roth was saying, to never look through me, to really look at me yeah. and like see me as a person. That's a, one of his <laughs> many incredible gifts that he was able to share with everybody, regardless of color, race, <laughs> or gender. And that is just a gift to have in this world, you know? Um, one of, thank you both yeah. for taking the time to stop by, Jane. Thank you for Emma. having me. <laughs> of course, of course, very powerful uh, words from both of you. And someone else who's very dear friends uh, with John Schnepp, Jeremy Johns uh, has sent in a video um, and we'll go to it now. After we were done filming comic book shopping, there were all these stores, these little shops in the vicinity, in the area that Schnepp liked, he liked to go to. And so instead of going to him alone, he was like, hey, you want to come with? So we were like, hey, we'll catch an Uber back later. We're going to go hang out at these shops. So we went to these shops that I, they were all all shops that he loved. You know, you had the, the shop with all the action figures, shop with movie paraphernalia. One of them had a lot of horror movie paraphernalia, which if you can find the shop that has the John Carpenter's The Thing stuff in it, Schnepp is there and life is good. But I remember we were just going around these shops and it, it was like being brought into Schnepp's brain, you know? It, it, was, it was a Schnepp wonderland. It was like a kid in a candy store. It was a, it was a Schnepp land. So I, I, again, how do, you, how do you tell someone how your, how your mind works? You show them. So it was like, it was a day with Schnepp. It was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was just a couple of nerds in Burbank going around to those nerdy stores and he and all the shop owners knew him you know he would just talk with the shop owners like hey john it was like being with norm from cheers you know <laughs> he was the norm from cheers of the nerdy world there's not a person who met him who didn't didn't just love and adore the guy so anyone who met him feels a loss people who didn't meet him feel the loss you know and uh we all remember we all remember together and we mourn together schnepp when i was a stranger in a strange land moved to la for that year um, you made me feel welcome. Instantly you were inviting. And I'll never forget you. Ever. Um, and I love you, man. Yep, very powerful words from Jeremy. Um, you guys saw them on camera have their interactions uh, numerous times on a number of shows, but one of my gifts was being able to watch them off camera and the conversations they would get into as two very big personalities with their own very strong opinions on things. Uh, and it was just like popcorn, uh, watching them go at it about stuff. And that's the thing that was so great. But John, John could always have these debates and arguments with you, but never be disrespectful. And that, that is so incredible to watch, especially in this sphere that sometimes can get a bit hard to watch debate on. Uh, they were so uh, fun to watch together. So thank you, Jeremy, for sending those words in. Um, this may be the hardest segment I have to get through uh, because I welcome, I welcome Amy to the show who I've gotten to know so well doing the show with John and Amy and of course Robert and Ashley Victoria Robinson. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having us. Um, Thank you for having us. Please forgive me if this one's the toughest one. But Amy, would you like to talk about your time with John being on the show and coming on the show and being friends with him as well? Uh, yes. Hey, <laughs> I, I didn't write anything down and now I wish I had. But, um, uh, who? Um, thank you to everyone for everything you've said. Uh, and um, thank you to everybody who's been sending messages. Uh, it's, it's been a lot, but it, you keep reminding. You, uh, John was who you thought he was. Um, he was exactly who he seemed like. He, he loved hugely. He hated hugely, but even when he did, like, but like, I don't know. I keep thinking about this. Like, he he didn't waste his time hating things he didn't care about mm -hmm. because why would he? And he didn't hate your show. He loves Jack Kirby. Yeah. Like, he, it, that was the the center of gravity that his whole life 
revolved around was this passion. Uh, my life is so different because I know him. Uh, every single time I was here, I, I considered myself his guest. Um, and this space that he made, the, the generosity he had, the way he listened. Mm -hmm. Somebody else said, uh, they tweeted and tagged us and said he always treated me like a person. And John didn't know any other way to be. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know him as long as some. I went and dug up the email the first time he invited me on Heroes. It was November 2015. And it's so funny because it's so formal. It's like, you know, we're looking for someone with strong comic book knowledge. And, and, and you know, that lasted three seconds. That point. Like, <laughs> uh, but I learned from him every single day. Um, when the show changed, when it went alone, he was so patient when schedules were impossible. Like, he always made room. He always made me feel welcome. Uh, um, he was one of a kind. Um, a lot of the best moments, I think, like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to podcast listeners for the fact that me laughing at what he's saying is probably half of every episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. um, uh, thank you, crew, for dealing with all of that. Uh, I would love you. People would tweet me pictures of me laughing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that is, that's just what it was like. I, I, I think I think some of the best moments happened on, on, on uh, the show. Like, I think I found out that he worked on Space Ghost in the middle of a show. <laughs> I was just kind of losing it. And he was just like, yeah, Space Ghost. Uh, because he, he, he was so unpretentious, but he lived such an extraordinary life. Mm. Uh, and his, his, he, his whole life was made out of uh, all of the three parts of like, his life was made out of the art he loved and the art he made that changed other people's lives. And then this phase, these last couple of years, we're spending so much time talking about art to point people to things. It, it, every part of it fueled every other part. And, and I understood more than I ever had before the way that someone's art comes uniquely from who they are. Mm -hmm. And knowing John has made me braver and made me I, I, more like, I, I want to be weirder. I want to be more <laughs> rock and roll. I like he. He, I don't, he was one of a kind. I, I guess that's about, yeah. sorry, I've been talking no, for no. a No, please, please don't apologize. <laughs> you, you of all people have nothing to apologize for. Him. Well, that's, that's the thing. Me and everyone, we, to know him was to love him. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. He spoke so highly of you, too. I mean, we would have conversations off camera about how much he enjoyed working with you and Robert. And it was my favorite thing to watch you guys interact, and especially when he would say something or you guys would come up with some, some, and then all of you would break out. It was just the greatest thing to experience and to watch. You know, it was so much. And he just, he loved you so much. Like, he just always talked about how much he wanted you to feel comfortable and happy being on the show, and he really appreciated your points of views and your opinions and the unique takes you brought on things and the almost, like, you would always almost be like, well, I don't mean to say this, but this is really, and then go into the things that he loved that. He loved that because you were so kind, but you still felt very powerful about your opinions, you know, but and he loved that. He saw, I think he saw pieces of himself in you in that way, like this idea to express powerfully your, your opinions and get sweaty about stuff. And the first show I did with you, uh, the hero was with you, mm. and um, I just knew, like, you know, John Holly spoke so highly of you, um, and I was so intimidated. I thought, oh gosh, like, what if I don't know all the stuff? <laughs> what if I don't know all the things? Yeah. And I sat here and I fell in love with Amy so much. I said to her off camera, like, I have a massive girl crush on Amy. People were tweeting me like, oh, so you're really into Claire, huh? And I was like, I have no rebuttal. Yeah, no, like, yeah. And I sit texting Holly going, do you think I could ask Amy out for a coffee? Is that going to be like too strong? I mean, I don't want to come on too strong. Um, and you just, I just knew, like, and the rapport between you and John made me laugh so much. Yeah. Like, you guys are incredible, and you're incredible for doing the show with them. Yeah. The, the Amazing. privilege of getting to surprise him is something that I will always oh, treasure. Yes. Because we all learn from him every day, but to get to make him laugh or to uh, make him turn left and said, I don't. Um, the, the, and, uh, I'm so grateful that 
for the people that I got to know from working with him. Mm-hmm. I like you, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amy and I enjoyed the the similar trait of, oh, you look so much shorter in all these pictures. And you're like, it's because John's 100 feet tall. That's why we're standing on the ground. <laughs> what are some of your thoughts and remembrances and experiences with John that you want to talk about? John Ashley? came to my wedding. Oh, well, yes. Um, and so did Holly. And we didn't ask John to do anything to prepare a speech. We just asked him to show up uh, and be 100 feet tall and be an amazing <laughs> person. Um, and he, without being asked, went up and did give quite a lovely speech um, about myself and about Jason. And the, he was the last person who got up. And the best part was everyone kind of got up and was very formal and said the nice things that you normally say at a wedding. <laughs> um, and John kind of like danced his way up <laughs> in his purple shirt. <laughs> and there's, um, we've been sharing them online after I first shared them online as well. There's some really great pictures of him kind of walking around like this. And that's how I love to remember him the most because he did give so many people phenomenal opportunities. I got to be on. I got to be on Collider at all because of John. Mm -hmm. I got to be on my first New York Comic Con panel because of John. He donated his time and his effort and his help to our Kickstarter campaign and had lunch with a fan because we Mm -hmm. asked him to. But aside from all those amazing things, he touched so many of our lives in a personal way. He's the first straight guy I ever talked to about Drag Race who didn't make fun of me for watching it. (laughs) Um, We have the same favorite drag queen. (laughs) And stuff like that is as incredible as being able to get in a fight with him about like which Jack Kirby property is the best and how many Kirby crackles are too much because it's like everyone's been saying like John was prolific but his interests and his love were prolific as well and that all deserves to be celebrated as much as the show does and, yeah. and everything else but yeah. I'll always remember him dancing in a purple shirt at my wedding <laughs> <laughs> and he was changing and creating every day mm-hmm. I, he, like, and he was so open to that and he was going to do so much. Yeah. Um, and I think, sorry, I'm losing it again. No, that was going to no, lead no. to something. Like that. <laughs> there still will be more Schnepp oh, yeah. as well. That's yeah. the, that's the, 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 be- the beauty of his crazy mind. Like, it's not gone, mm-hmm. you know. And I just like hearing you guys, everyone, and, and the, the essay's a real, like, a real maverick. That's what gave him star quality, yeah. the vulnerability and that maverick quality. You know, we were supposed to go home on Wednesday this week, and my husband and I had a chat. We want to be here for Holly. I was like, oh, God, but we need to get back to cat. And my husband went, you know what? John would be like, fuck it, you know, like, <laughs> just stay, you know? Um, and I know he would be, and, and Paul even went out. He, Paul's been thinking about getting a tattoo for you. He went, yeah, with everything that's happened, I'm going to get a tattoo. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's that inside of people, even if that's that small essence is there of the, fuck it, you know, go mm-hmm. and do it. I love that. And if that's something that you can give us all as well, do what you love and mm-hmm. talk about what you're passionate and be kind mm-hmm. yeah. to one another. I've said that in the show several times. Always be kind and be passionate. We all have different interests. We're all different sorts of geeks. Yeah, yeah. You and John, John would be the first person to defend you. The first time I went mm-hmm. to New York Comic Con, I expressed concern about being on the Heroes panel um, as a woman. Shocker, we get harsher criticism. Um, and John said that if anything happened, he'd beat the shit out of whoever came <laughs> after us. Mm-hmm. And you're like, great, then this is gonna be, yeah. this is gonna be fine. I yeah. guess yeah. overemphasize, I'm so glad Emma brought it up, that like, what exactly what you said, you, like I'm, I'm a 90s nerd, the way he was mm-hmm. an 80s nerd, and like, mm-hmm. it was, we were sort of, we couldn't assume we'd be welcome for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a question with John. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and like it, I, I like I can. It, I was so uncomfortable with the word sweaties at first. I was like, <laughs> we're, we're what? Like, is it a sex thing? What is yeah. it? Like, um, I glisten. I don't um, sweat. Yeah. Well, and and what I love about it is that the, the other thing is that could be a misunderstanding is is like is it a litmus test? Like, unless you're sweating, you're not nerdy enough. And that's not what it is. What it is is it is the fact that like you love something and that's not necessarily flattering. You, Maybe you look real dumb. Maybe you have pit stains. Like that's ju- that's who you are, and that is your authentic response to the thing that you love. Yeah. And that's special <laughs> and worth celebrating. Mm-hmm. And that's what it means. And and I love that so much. He was always um, 
because everybody remembers his Transformers 4 rant. He was always just like, I'm sorry, Roka, I'm sorry. Just, just, but, but this is, this is, you know, and I was, but I never cared. You know, I never cared. It was just so, you know, because he was so, uh, he just never came from a mean place, man. And that's I, a, I also remember no. him being like, yeah, well, you didn't like Batman v Superman, but like, I thought the extended one was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Back and Great. forth. Yeah. But he, like, he was willing to give things a chance, yeah. even like without that for a second compromising strong opinions on mm -hmm. anything. Uh, and and I, I do, I loved it. <laughs> You with your whiteboard trying to get us to stop talking. <laughs> uh, like, and, and then we'd be coming to the end of the show and it'd be like, all right, and we desperately need to wrap up. And John would be like, and now we're going to read this comment, are comic book stores good? And I was like, all right, oh, okay, no, well, it's going like, to... No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> because he was, he was a, a unique and amazing champion yeah. for that stuff. And he was, he was always like, he was ready to sort of panic at a moment's notice of like, are they going away? Do people still care? Can we make it happen? <laughs> but like, it... it like they're not going anywhere. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it will be because of him, because he was here, because he emphasized how important it was to support the things that you love, to throw your love out there mm -hmm. in the world, uh, to appreciate the artists, the people who made the stuff you care about. Um, it, I, like I don't think I know anyone who had as much love for creators and for fans as John. He saw all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was. He was a very involved Uatu of the <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Somebody draw that. Yeah. Please. Yes, <laughs> and uh, so it's it's very difficult to imagine moving on without him, but I know that the like that's what he would want. And I think that's why it was so important mm -hmm. just to get real selfish that we all went to Comic Con and that we celebrated him and we talked to the fans because John would have been the first person to be like, no fucking go yeah. and yeah. have a good time yes. and have no a doubt. drink no and doubt. buy a new yep. comic book. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the, yeah, I'm sorry. Go, go. Oh, so I, was, I was just going to say like, you know, something that sparked my, my brain, like just the celebrating the differences. There's been comments where I say something on the show, I'm sure you guys say something and people go online going, you don't like that? Why? Then let's talk about it. John yeah. would talk and go, mm -hmm. hey, well, if you don't like this, check this out. Mm -hmm. And, 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 put you on to so many amazing things because that's the amazing thing about being a nerd yeah. you know and he embodied that so let's celebrate he couldn't understand if people were arguing about stuff like that he was like no nah, let's let's share and you know it just i'm so glad that i'm sitting here with people where i know that his memory will live on even past yeah. anything else he is an absolute one of a kind Amy, any last yeah. words you want to say about John? Um, I loved what Holly had to say earlier, which was, uh, if you know him from here, I'm, I'm so glad. But if you only know him from here, you ha there's great news. You have so much more mm -hmm. of his life that you can learn about, because he did so much. And he meant so much to so many people. Mm -hmm. um, and I know my life is really different, because he was here. And I will uh, miss him very much. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Thanks. I haven't been able to. And those are beautiful words, Amy. Thank you, and Claire and Ashley. Thank you. Um, as we wrap up here, I want to say uh, I can be an a-hole as a producer, and I can be very hard. But with John, I couldn't because <laughs> John, he just he was he just had a way to melt my heart that I couldn't, even when I was frustrated, even when I had the whiteboard, even when I was wrapping up, and he couldn't care less. Uh, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do it, you know? I couldn't be harder on him because I love and respected him so much. And it's the hardest thing in the world to know he's gone. And you're the only one I've surrendered my tears to, Amy, because of that, and Holly. Because I just, you're my connections to him more than anyone else. And so I want to say, although we move on without him here in physical form, all of us move on with him inside of us and learn the lessons from our experiences with him and our times with him. Uh, there's a quote from Shakespeare in Hamlet. He says, he was a man, take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. And I think of no better tribute for John Schnepp than that. I close his white computer one last time on Heroes. And I say to all of you, 
and I want to ask everyone to come up, if you guys can come up behind Ashley, and if we can go to the wide shot, Cody, if that's all right. These remembrances, these experiences, these memories you've heard from all of us, I hope we have in some way picked you up as well and made you feel a part of this community even more so because we all share in his loss, but we also share in the celebration of the time we had with John and the lessons we learned from him. And so I say from our heroes family to all of you, thank you for having gone on this journey with John on Collider Heroes. Uh, and there will be announcements going forward about what we're going to do with the show. But for now, let us just remember him, the king of the sweaties, <laughs> in the best way possible. Honor him in the way you treat people. Honor him by coming up with a crazy idea and going for it. <laughs> Buying that shirt that looks crazy, you know, everybody's gonna make fun of you, do that. Wear your hair however you want, do whatever you want to do because he celebrated that, the passion of that and the sweatiness of that. And so that's the greatest way that you can honor John Schnepp. And as we wrap up here, I want to thank everybody who showed up and shared because I know it was very difficult for all of you. And a lot of people who couldn't be here. Yes. Absolutely. And all the videos that were sent in by Jason and Jeremy. So thank you, everyone. And one last time, sweaties unite. <laughs>